Hey fellow YouTubers, Rex here bringing you how to make machinima and uh, how to make the things that I do. <laughs> um, which I get a lot of questions, like an obscene amount of uh, daily inquiries about how to do this or how to do that. And I thought it would be a pretty cool idea to just, I guess, explain it all and put it all in one video for everyone to see. So here you go. How to make machinima. So. I guess the most important thing, and really the only thing that I'm going to be talking about in this video primarily, is the console commands um, that you use to make the things that I make. Now, uh, primordially, the help function. The help function, just typing help, it, um, it pretty much allows you to know the name and the code of everything in the game. So, for example, if I want to summon a bandit, I'll just type help, bandit, and then the number four. The number four is not important, but it's the... I mean, you can just go ahead and just type help bandit, just like that. But there are different codes. You can do help bandit and then uh, two, three, or four. Those are different commands that you really don't need to worry about. Uh, as long as you know that you can use four for the same purpose, that's fine. But uh, you type help bandit, and then you get this. Uh, you can hear every single different type of bandit that is in the game, every single one you see that. I'm just scrolling up, I'm not stopping, and that's, I'm scrolling down, and there's just like hundreds of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is what you use to know which exactly which character you need for whatever machinima you're going to do. So, for example, uh, let's use bandit, just uh, the thought, for example, to, to summon him. You use player, period, place at me, 000, zero, zero you use the code that appears there, 003DE5A. Zero, zero, and then you summon the motherfucker. Now, bandits, now uh, you use skill to kill it. Um, bandits are really good for machine map because they attack whoever's on site if it's not a bandit. So if you want two people fighting, you can just put one bandit and for example one guard. Like let's just make that happen. Help oh we already have bandit. Let's just bandit uh, a general one. Uh, place at me FF zero 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 FF six. We'll summon a bandit and then help guard for player period place at me FF zero 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 EA five. And uh yep and then they're gonna start fighting. That's uh, really useful because, again, bandits are going to attack anything on site, and guards, um, they're going to attack, you know, bad things like bandits or skeletons. You have to know that everything you can use disable here to just simply make them disappear, so you don't clock the entire battlefield of useless dead things. Disable, there you go. Um, you have to know that uh, guards and, I mean, everything in here in the game has a allegiance, right? So guards are aligned to the good side, for example. Um, and then you have things like skeletons which are on their, on their own side, and then you have dragons which are on their own side. And uh, obviously you have storm cloaks, and then you have imperials, so everything has a side, and opposing sides usually fight if they are, I mean obviously if they are at war with each other. So. Um, you can actually change allegiances. I'm not gonna go really into that because I honestly don't use it. Uh, but you could use it, and I guess I will explain that on another video some other time. But um, I want to get a little bit further into the whole summoning part. Now, uh, I showed you guards and bandits, but you can also use animals and anything. You can type help, uh, say giant. There you go, all the codes for giants. You can do literally for everything that you want. Um, now, really important, if you want to make like an army of sorts, you have to toggle off the command uh, the command for battle, which is really important because say that I want to summon, the, well, giants, for example, player, period, place, at me, FF, 000, ADF. Say that I want to summon 10 giants, right? After the code, I'll just type 10 here. Like I'll just put a space there and then type 10 and then they'll appear. Of course, well it depends on the giant. Some giants are, are, are passive, some are aggressive. They seem to be passive, they're not attacking me. So let's make them attack me. Now they're all aggressive towards me. Now what you do to have them not attack you 
uh, this is, you know, if you made a mistake or if you summon someone that is actually aggressive, then you just simply do toggle AI. And it toggles all AI processing off. And then you do toggle combat AI, right? TCAI. And it toggles all combat AI processing off. Which means that they're not going to attack me anymore. Gets a little scary, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, they're not going to attack you. Oh, they're actually circled me. Sons of bitches. Anyways. Um, right, that one that I'm using is really important as well. It toggles collision on and off. TCL. With this, you can fly around and get panoramic views of things, which I... I mean, I use a lot when things are... Like, if I'm going to present an army, you see, like, if I was... If, if I wanted to say, like, oh, ten giants, and then I will just, like, do like this and show them off, I can do that. The problem with TCL which is a big problem, is that it toggles all collision off. Which means that it toggles collision off for objects and for NPCs. Which means that if, for example, one one of the NPCs jump while well, you have TCL off, they're gonna stay flying. Or if they like, if they get knocked down by some attack, they're gonna like float and get bugged and stuff. So uh, you should never use collision off during a battle. So if you want a panoramic view of the battle, uh, you use TFC, which is like a free vision cam. This goes a little bit fast, uh, faster, as you can see. Um, and it will not toggle the collision off, which is nice. The problem with this, though, is that my character is, in essence, still standing there. You see, I put this TFC off, and I go back to the point where I actually activated it from. So if I do TFC and I go really far away from my body, my body is still up there with the giants. If I go far away, things are gonna stop loading. You see that it's, it's not loading. Um, Skyrim works in a way that it will only load high resolution textures when it's around you or close to you. So you see that it stops loading once I go far away. That's the problem with TFC. Um, but obviously as long as you stay close to the battle and don't go far off, then you should be fine. So that's no problem. Um, another thing that I use, which is really important during big battles, say that I, I'm gonna summon help skeleton four. Play, again, you don't need the four, but I, I'm used to doing it. Uh, player plays at me FF 000 F8 C for a skeleton, and then another ten. Uh, I hate these skeletons. They they summon things. But um, one thing that you should use is TGM. TGM is God Mode. God Mode is extremely important because if you're like me and you're carrying a shit ton of stuff, I mean, if you're doing machinima, you obviously want to have everything that you could possibly need at your fingertips. You know, if you if you want to do a scene for um, this sword, for example, if I if I if I was gonna use this sword for a scene, you know, it's nice to be carrying it around. But if you do carry a lot of shit around, obviously you're gonna be Overcumbered, and you're not going to be able to run. TGM is important for that, but it's also important because if you start up a big fight, let me take this off here. Okay, if you start off a big fight, it's nice to be immortal, obviously, because um, I like to do. Let's just kill this all. I like to do a, a lot of takes where I'm like in the middle of the danger because it's it's. Uh, much more funner to uh, to watch, you know, obviously a battle close by than being like a mile away, right? So using TGM is really important for that so that you don't get killed by accident. Now, uh, you can use Resurrect to resurrect them. It's I don't really use it as much. I just like to summon a new one again because they tend to bug if you resurrect them. But I need someone alive to show you guys this. Um, this is a technique that I used a lot in the greatest battle of Skyrim that you guys loved. Um, this is used to change the... I guess, if, imagine that you're using a camera. Uh, you change the lens of the camera to get like a close-up view of the target. Obviously, right? Well, you can use this in Skyrim as well. Let me put my character like this. So, everyone is already used to this. Do um, you guys see that this is the view that everyone uses? I mean, if I was going to make a take of a fighting, um, this would get stale quickly because everyone knows um, 
how this looks like this. Right? I mean, everyone plays like this. So everyone gets used to it, right? You can do this. FOV. And then you can put a number from... Usually it's from 1 to 80. Uh, I guess the uh, the standard one is 60. Or something like something like 70, I guess. Yeah, I think it's like 70. This is like the standard one that the game uses in, in by default. But you could use something like 30. And then it gives you like a different point of view, which is really cool. Now, if you use this in first person, something like 10, then you get a, a, a really nice close-up. And this is especially awesome. Uh, let me just put it back to normal. You can type in FOV0 to put it back to normal. Um, let me summon a, dra a dragon so I can uh, explain this a little bit better. Player period place at me. Um, 0, 0, 10, feed. Um, I can do this and then get a nice close-up of the dragon. This is really nice for these types of situations. It also makes... Sorry if I made you all dizzy, but... Um, let's disable this to take him off. Um, this That's really nice for those close-up encounters and uh, if you want to get like a nice camera style view of the battle. Because if you notice, do like this, the camera moves a lot, much more than you know what it normally does if you have the normal view. Uh, it does create like a really nice camera style, like a real person camera style, you know, going on with it. So that's really, really cool. And um, yeah, now um, equipping the characters with gear. Let's toggle. Uh, it's very important, by the way, if you're going to be toggling AI, um, make sure that you don't have. Uh, this here. I don't know if I enabled my mouse to be shown in the video, but um, you see that I'm toggling this thing. Um, is it better if you have it off when you're doing this? Because otherwise, you can see I can toggle all AI processing off and all AI combat processing off. But if I have him selected, I have selected a giant. I can toggle the combat AI. Oh, I guess the skeleton is chosen. But whatever, I can toggle individual processing as well. So it's better if you do it while having nothing selected. So yeah, uh, let's summon a guard. So I can explain this. Player period plays at me. Uh, FF000 EAZ. Right, so we have a guard. Now, this is really important. You click him to ap make appear his code there, like I'm doing, you see there? Then you do remove all items. It removes all items. Holy shit, dude, you are fucked up. Uh, you remove all items that he currently has on. This is really important because if you want him to wear what you want him to wear, then you have to take everything else off him or else you risk him changing gear or changing weapons, which obviously we don't want. Now, say that we want to equip him with uh, Daedric armor. We do help, Daedric, and then we get a lot of weapons. You see that it says WEAP, WEAP stands for weapon so we just keep scrolling up 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 until we get to the armor now uh, let's equip him with purified daedric golden uh, armor let's go ahead and do equip item and then the code so we do equip item 03444456 and it didn't work. oh I have another thing selected Jesus sorry about that there you go so that's really how you equip them. I mean, and you can. I mean, it's the the process is tedious. Like, if you're gonna arm an entire army, obviously you would rather just simply summon something that's similar or you know something like that, just because it um, it does take a time, a, a lot of time if you're gonna be doing it this way. We're gonna do then the helmet, I guess zero three four 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 fifty nine, and there you go. It looks kind of weird but yeah that's pretty much what you would do to equip someone with armor you do the same thing for weapons just make sure that he doesn't have any weapon equipped um, if you want to make sure and you're not sure about it you can simply click on him sh do show inventory like this no show inventory there you go and you see that he solitude guard has two items and then bad editor fuck you man it says there purified Curious and the helmet, so that's how you know.
if uh, he has whatever you need him to have. But yeah, that's pretty much everything regarding summoning and equipping an army. Um, the next thing that you should probably know are simple commands that will help you out, uh, you know, doing the machinima that you require. And things like that, for example, are COC. COC is a teleportation code that you have seen me use before. COC can teleport you any, not anywhere. Uh, I guess I was going to say anywhere, but it's, it, it's not everywhere. It summons you to cell blocks. Now, there are a limited amount of cell blocks in the game and not everything is a cell block. For example, if I want to be summoned to white to yeah, I guess white run. I can do COC white run and then it will summon me. Once it does, it'll su it'll summon me outside of white run. You see this is a cell block. This is probably one of the first cell blocks that I made in the game, but whatever. Um, as you can see, I'm not actually inside of it. If I would want to go inside, I would have to do something along the lines of COC white run 01, I think. Let's see, help, white run. And it's gonna tell me you go you go up, 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 and then until it tells you cells. You see there's a cell. Those are all the cells that has white run on it. So you see that if you want to go, uh, the one that I typed was this one, white run, that just says white run, cell white run. That's the one I used, um, but you see that it has for for every single house inside of there. So um, there are different cells. And there's no there's not a cell for every single place in the game, but there are cells for important places in the game. Um, one popular one is COC QA Smoke. This actually takes you to the testing realm of the developers of the game. This place has every single item in the game stored in these search containers. So if I wanted a weapon, or if I wanted to look for a cool weapon, I would just open all, well not all standard armor, I would go to all standard weapons here. And then you can see, these are all the weapons in the game right here. So this is really cool, if you're looking for a, a specific sword that you're not sure what's the name of, you're not sure how it looks like, but you're looking for something specific, you know, something like this, you're like, holy shit, hey, that's cool, you just take it. And then you can use it, obviously. Um, that's you can use that for wet, for armor, clothing, jewelry. One advice: do not open the enchanted armor and or the enchanted uh, weapons, because there is literally. I mean, imagine every single weapon in the game. Now imagine every single weapon in the game times ten, right? I mean, there is like, well, more than times ten. There's like what? Uh, there's a big number of enchantments per every single weapon in the game, and that opens them all. So your com your computer is going to crash, almost guaranteed, if you open that. Um, but yeah, you have everything here, but we don't really need to be here. Let's just go back to wide run. Um, so yeah, COC is really important to go traveling around, especially to places where you normally wouldn't be able to go. So, for example, if you want to go to school death, and which you normally uh, can only go after uh, completing a after being really far into the main quest line, you can actually do this with this. So for example, COC, school Daffin, uh, you have to type 01 or 02 or 03, but uh, I'll just type 04 to get the farthest into the dungeon, so I don't need to s waste a lot of time here. But uh, to get to this place, you actually have to be pretty far along the main quest line. So being here while being level 1 can actually become really handy if you are doing machinima like me. Um, obviously you cannot be wasting time, you know, uh, because, I mean, not to say that it would be a waste of time playing the game like you should, um, it's just that, uh, when you're doing Machinima, the account in which you're doing Machinima is usually fucked up, because you do a lot of fucked up things, like summon people and summon weapons and increase your levels, and you don't obviously want to, to have your normal... I can't, your normal account being, you know, fucked over by codes. So, if you want to be here quick, then you simply type COC School Daffin, and then you can get here quick. And this is the this is the stage that I used in my uh, my first machine man, which is the um, Chronicles of a Sad Story. You see that I can get here, jump here, and go to Southern Guard really quick. Like I don't need to do any bullshit. I could also just do COC. Sovengarde, spelled like that, whatever, um, 
and you know be teleported here quickly which is really really important using coc is uh, crucial a lot of the times to get to places that you normally can't go um a big example of that when i was doing the dragon priest uh, video i had to do a big long quest to actually a go to the end of the dragon priest place it was um it was in where was it it was in uh, here labyrinthian there is a place in labyrinthian where you just go to white run uh where you can only go in after doing a bunch of quests and doing coc enables me to go in there really quick which is really useful but um let's see something else here um right set scale this is important well it's not as important but it can come really in handy so say that you need this to be a monster right a a torch bug i don't know if i can do this with them but let's see set scale 10 oh yes you can you see you can do i mean you can do this for for any type of NPCs. I don't know if you can do this for everything. Let's see. Holy mother of God! I guess you can. I never tried that before. <laughs> Hold on. Give me give me one second. This is amazing. Holy shit! I gotta use this in the video. Holy fucking Christ! Jesus, mother of God. Alright, sorry that I'm cursing a lot, but this is amazing. Um, yeah, apparently you learn something new every day. But yeah, you can do this for everything, I guess. Um, what else is there to use? Um, PSV. Sorry, there. PSV. This uh, teaches you all the spells in the game, which is obviously really important for Machinima. You need all of those spells. I mean, you need all the options that you can get, obviously. Uh, this gives you everything, so that's that's comes pretty handy you can't you I mean you only need to use it once and you learn everything so that's pretty chill holy do you know what this reminds me of like a night elf uh, place in World of Warcraft they they built it like this but whatever <laughs> that is crazy man Jesus <laughs> anyways um, right advanced PZ scale restoration whatever number here as long as it's big and well, I already have restoration max, but uh, you get what I'm saying. You type advanced PC skill, and then whatever skill you want to learn. Yep, I want to level, and then you can level. Oh, Jesus Christ! And then you can level whatever you want. So that's pretty cool. Um, I guess one last thing before I go that is really important: shouts. Um, oh, by the way. Uh, to learn a shout, uh, I mean, as long as you do PSV, as I told you, you're gonna get all the shouts, but you still need to learn them. So to learn them, you're gonna need Dragon Souls. You could kill dragons easily with commands, but you can also do, let's see, what was it? Player, period, modaf, then you do Dragon Souls, and then the number. And then Dragon Soul Absorbed, so that's pretty cool. But, um... One thing, and this is the last thing I'm going to show you guys, that is really important and actually helped me out a lot. Slow time. Let me learn it here really quick. Three times, obviously. Let's summon something. Let's do help bandit for player, period, place, at me, FF000, EF9, three of them. They're going to attack me. No, I have, I have things off. Let's turn this on. Processing. Now they're going to attack me. Now... Uh, let's equip slow time, time and uh, yeah you see that they're in slow motion this actually comes really uh, really handy if you're doing like a dramatic scene as I used in the Chronicles of a Sad Story you see that a um, I mean it's really cool if you do something like shout or relenting force and then you well it kind of took off at the same time I did it but uh, you can use Unrelenting Force and then the slow motion or vice versa. And you will have like a slow motion like fall like I used it before. Um, it's really dramatic and really epic which is really cool. And before I forget, and I swear this is the real last one, the most important code that you can have for Machinima is TM. I actually learned this um, late and I wish I would have learned it sooner 
TM removes or toggles all the well, all the HUD HUD from the game. So you see that I cannot see anything. Like I right now, I literally popped up my inventory. I cannot see it. I took it off, put it on. You guys, you see that the game stops. The the you see, I'm gonna toggle this off. My inventory. Oh my, yeah, this. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, my options menu here is turned on and I cannot see it you see that I uh, I can tap it on and off and uh, it, it removes that which is really helpful let me take it off because it removes the the little you see that it doesn't sh it doesn't show the uh, the shouting I guess uh, energy bar or whatever the shouting bar and uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't show things like dialogue options or anything that would pop up in your in your screen it uh, it toggles it off which is amazingly useful because you would be surprised at how many people like got angry that I didn't use it on my first video because it's uh, it takes away from the immersion and it's really important to have that on obviously it makes recording a little bit difficult because you obviously have to be guessing what you're typing or you know whatever but I mean, you can toggle it on and off, so that's no problem. But um, it does make everything so much cooler. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys find it informative. Um, I'll be linking to this video for everyone that asks me, you know, how to do the things that I do, because I do get that a lot. And uh, but hopefully, you guys learned something today, and I hope that you guys make awesome machinimas, because honestly, I want to see awesome machinimas. And if you guys ever make some awesome machinima, and, you, and uh, just just give me a shout out. Uh, well, not shout out. Just give me a shout, and I'll give you guys a shout out, and uh, probably post it on my channel as well. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this, and as always, have a nice day. If you have a question, leave it in the comments, and I'll answer it. Peace out, guys.